Are we live? I believe we're live. What's up, guys? And girls. What up, Turk? What up, Raccoon? Watercooled? Runman? Mike? Hunter? Alright, I'm in the Vans RV14. Simwork Studios. I just wanted something with a really good can- like... A good canopy. Look at this thing, it's all glass. I was gonna fly the Sting again, but I feel like I've flown that a bunch. So we're in the RV-14. The tricycle variant, of course. You're in a tail dragger, you're insane. What's up, Jack? Alright, this is day five, the final day of the Appalachian Trail route by Peter Mooney from the World Tours website. We're starting at BLF, which is Bluefield. That's where we ended up last Saturday. I have my coffee in hand. I just ate a breakfast sandwich. And the flaps are down at parking for some reason. Oh, wait, this is not even on. But the engine is on. Alternator is on. Did I turn the battery off by accident? Wait, how the heck? How is this not on? Oh, there we go. Avionics master. Okay. Control E fail. Autopilot on off. Nav and strobe lights. Wigwag off. Fuel pump. Let's check if, uh, all right. My switches work here. Pedo fuel pump. Good. I guess autopilot master. I'll want that on. We have cow flaps, but I'll probably ignore them because I'm, I'm horrible. Okay. All that works. Fuel is set to right tank. Let's fill it up. This is so weird. I uninstalled this Sky for Sim. I just tried it out a minute before the stream. I uninstalled it and now it's back and I don't understand how it's still there. It's not in my community folder anymore, so I have to figure out how to uninstall it. I installed it not knowing exactly what it was and then after I learned what it was, I was like, oh, I kind of have this already with, um, with flow and with like Navigraph and stuff, but it's like a little EFB with like a moving map and things like that. Uh, some of you, one of you guys mentioned it a couple times. And I picked it up because it's supposed to integrate with the Vans RV10. Um, but when I had it installed and I pulled out the... I pulled out the little EFB, there was still nothing on it. So it's probably user error, but... Alright, let's look at our wind. Tail dragger time. You're insane. <clears throat> I got the bright... What is this a runt orange? All colors are runt colors if they're very bright. It's not quite runt banana yellow. All right, we got a 530 in this thing. I don't know why I'm turning my transponder on, but we are. And this is the, of course, still we're on the stock G3X touch here. When the beta is out, then we'll be on the nice one. I wonder if I can turn off this little standby attitude indicator. Like I do in the Kodiak to save some frames. Servos, ADSB, strobe nav, those are all lights, spares. PFD and MFD. I don't see one just for that. Yeah, I guess I'll leave it on. It's probably set up with the PFD, but we'll, we'll just leave it. Oh, I need to get the tour guide on, just in case there's anything good to get to listen to here. Say Intentions has like a whole new UI now. Well, they have like they made it like dark mode, so it's just a little bit different. Yep, it's working. Alright, I'm going to turn off the chatter today. We're just going to use the intercom. Chatter off. Intercom. 
We got Sarah on for now. We're not going to listen to Janet yet because she's just going to talk about Toby the entire time. Yo, Sarah, what's up? Make sure it's working. What's up, Kevo? You love this plane? Tail dragger, of course. Uh huh. Hey, Jewel. Oh, Sky for Sim is a pain. Hey there. Just enjoying the beautiful view up here. Did you know that the Phoenix Bridge, located 10 o'clock, six miles away, is a historic landmark in the area? It was built in 1888 and is a popular spot for history enthusiasts and photographers. Oh, like. It's definitely a sight to see from up here. All right, runways two, three. It looks like two, three will be our departing runway. 27 knot winds. Ooh. Very fun. Okay, let's change the CDI source here. GPS. It'll be nice when the beta's out and uh, we can all be on the new working title G3X Touch. I haven't used it since the first um, since the first beta release, and there's been a few updates since then. Sarah Hart, Toby, yep. <laughs> Alright, I'm doing a standing stream again today. Sit on my butt enough, so... Oh, I gotta turn around go to runway 2-3. Look how big the wings on this thing are, it's crazy. It is crazy. I say the word crazy, like, that's my only adjective, I think. It's crazy. Is that Turk right behind me? I see, I, I assume it's Turk in the, or maybe you're over there, Turk. I saw you in the... The rainbow livery. Oh yeah, this is probably you right here. Cali life? <laughs> Saying crazy? It is raining here again. We have like a weekend of rain. There's like a Los Angeles meme floating around like, Oh, it's the weekend? Hello, rain here. It's been like three weekends in a row. All week is fine and then the weekend it rains. Not that it changes what I'm going to do, but that's what's been happening. What's up, underdog? All right, now I feel like the engine is too quiet, so let me do my ritual sound settings. I never know how to put, like, how high to put the environment in other aircraft sounds either. Sometimes if you have crazy wind, it's just a little too much. All right, that's a little better. That is crazy. All right, lights are on. Fuel pump works. All right, we're going to take off and go southwest. We're starting in West Virginia today and ending in Georgia. And we'll see uh we'll see how many awesome points of interest we get along the way. I would bet zero if you've flown the other uh, legs of this. We, I think we've seen maybe one or two points of interest that were in the sim. Uh, I'll turn those on just so we know what we're flying by. Let's see. Assistance options, point of interest. I'll just turn it to easy so everything is on. But yeah, yesterday was... Or sorry, not yesterday. Uh, leg four last week was the best scenic day I think we had. Like... There was just that huge valley as part, like, where there was a bridge. Oh, which bridge was it? Um, there was just, there were a couple of really good scenic moments on that one that I feel like have been lacking in the beginning. The first, like, few days are kind of, kind of meh. What's up, Thomas? Sean, uh, we're headed to, yeah, from West Virginia to Georgia. We're just following the Appalachian Trail still. So we are right on the border of West Virginia and Virginia itself. If you're not American, it might be confusing, but there is a state called Virginia and there's a separate state called West Virginia. So if you're talking about the Western part of Virginia, it could be confusing, but we are in the state of West Virginia right now. But well, we're about to cross over the border as soon as we take off back into Virginia. <laughs> you're crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, I like you, but you're crazy. What is that from? Um, Is that... That's something with Will Ferrell and Sean William Scott. What is that movie? 
Who gets shot with a tranquilizer in the neck? Oh my god. It's not old school. What movie is that? <laughs> it's got three speeds, Max. Since you live in West Virginia, you have to educate people about that all the time. <laughs> oh man, sounds exhausting. All right, let's go. Yeah, we haven't invented East Virginia yet. Yeah, why don't we have five different Virginias? One for each cardinal direction and then just Virginia. All right, here we go. We got a 16 knot headwind. We're already off the ground. <laughs> this is fine, this is fine. Ooh, it's a little gusty too. 24 knots. Uh oh, I shouldn't fly in that mode. Put my flaps up a little too soon too. I was like, I need, I want less drag. Put the flaps up and then got the stall warning. Yeah, this southern part of the Appalachian seems way better than like the first half in terms of like interesting terrain. The mountains are way higher. Just, uh, seems more scenic. Oh, is it old school? Yeah. What's up, Enos? Oh, I realized I deleted We Love VFR and I didn't put it back in, so I'll have fewer water towers and stuff to look at today. That's fine. We got a lot of VFR stuff out on, on a Thursday, flying by all those cities. So yeah, no We Love VFR, no solar, solar um, panels and power lines. Oh man, these winds are crazy. <laughs> crazy, man. Yeah, it's gusting up to 30, 31 knots, it looks like. Sarah, tell us something interesting. I wish I could put like the GTN 750 in this or something in the middle panel. That'd be nice. But hopefully they'll update this plane like um, some of the others with the G G3X Touch. Um, like the Sting, the FS Reborn Sting is going to get updated with it. And then any stock planes that have one like... Is it the VL3? And the NX Cub, the I think, area the is rich in history and natural beauty. For example, the original Pocahontas Trailhead is a popular destination for outdoor enthusiasts and history buffs. Enthusiasts. It offers scenic hiking trails and a glimpse into the area's the historical DHC4. significance. The DHC4, nice. DHC4 is really cool. I remember, I remember downloading that on one Thursday stream, and uh, it took me like an hour to get it started, I think. But that plane is really cool. This one's just so nice. The Vans and the Sting, both of these, the Vans RV 10 and 14, and just have like this full on glass canopy. Good for stuff like this, just really high visibility. Uh, Watercooled says, Eastern part of West Virginia is the most mountainous in the state. Are we in the Eastern part right now? Let me see. Oh, yeah. We're like in the southeast. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been nicer visually. Like the yesterday, or I keep saying yesterday, leg four in today. In this leg, the last leg. Where am I taking that beautiful girl? We're going to Georgia. That's my, that's my first officer. Usually we have a, a dog or a cat, but today we have a real live human. Yeah, the winds are not super favorable today. 
Wait, am I? I'm gonna, I have to double check if I'm on a preset because it says the, it says the pressure is 2992, so it makes me think I'm not on live weather. Yeah, I am. Live time, live weather. Just a couple little tiny clouds in the sky. Let's test out the autopilot in this baby. Level mode. Altitude zero feet. No. All right, yeah, I guess we do need the uh, the redo of this. The updates to the G3X touch. Yeah, this is like the very old stock. This is almost like what we had for autopilot and in the uh, G1000, the 530 and the 430, like, or at least in the G1000, this level of just basic, <laughs> just basic, basic autopilot. And it, it's got level mode, even though I hit the nav button. I'm so glad we don't have all these bugs anymore. This thing is just like a relic. Uh, it's like a glimpse into the past of how things used to be in the sim. And luckily they're not this way anymore for most planes. Thank you, working title. Oh, Watercooled says on this leg of the trip, we'll be going over the Blue Ridge Mountains. I do have um, over on the side over here, I have, I have Navigraph up on my side monitor on the world map just to see yeah, which, which areas we're going over. Can be a little hit or miss. All right, autopilot back off. Hey, Sarah, what's this uh, landmark right in front of us? Come on, give us some good information. I bet it's uh, a good spot for photographer, photography and nature enthusiasts. That landmark right in front of us is the Love Work in Burke's Garden. It's a unique and colorful sculpture that represents love and community. The Love Work project was created to promote travel in Virginia and to celebrate the state's iconic slogan, Virginia is for lovers. The sculpture is a popular spot for tourists and locals to visit and take photos. It's a great symbol of the warm and welcoming atmosphere of the area. I mean, this the I guess that's a satellite photography showing that trail there. Is this part of the Appalachian Trail, I guess? Like, this exact part kind of looks like it. All right, we're turning left here. You bet enthusiasts flock to it, agreed, yep. <laughs> Those enthusiasts. And I guess some of these, some of these turns in the flight plan are probably just like, in there for um, for autopilot. Just so if you turn on autopilot, you're just flying over the nice parts. And I don't think there's necessarily like a, a landmark at every waypoint. I think on, was it on Thursday we were talking about like graphics? I feel like every stream we talk about graphics or Somebody who drops in will be like, oh my god, how's your sim look so good? And I'm running it high-end mostly. But uh, like this area, the terrain is cool, but there's like a, a lack of detail, right? Like this is one of those moments where it's just like a little boring looking. And it's especially plain looking and just because there's no, uh, there are no clouds. Like when it's clear skies, it just, the lighting looks so bland. I almost hope for at least few clouds in the sky. Makes it a lot nicer. No offense to Virginia, but... You know.
You're gonna join up, underdog? Yeah, I got the I got the map going down here. Whoops, let me center it. So you can see if you can make it out into the airport codes on the little map down here. You just join in. Join in at any one of these. Yeah, the title will show where where um we took off from, and so at the top of the screen you'll see it. But it just shows our, our final destination up there and how far we are overall today. But if you look at the little map in the corner, it looks like we're coming up to Mike Kilo Juliet Mountain Empire. It says five minutes ahead. Looks like it's right on our route too. And once we hit the hour mark, we will, uh, maybe a little after one hour, we'll find the closest airport to land at. Here's Mountain Empire Airport right here. Oh, we have a canopy jettison? What does this do? Oh, that's just to close the canopy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Keep your eye on the road. This thing goes pretty fast. We're almost going 200 knots. This is this is faster than I thought it would be. We even have like a pretty strong crosswind. Yeah, we're at 180 knots indicated. It's our ground speed. 164 knots. I'm gonna do a touch and go here at, at um, Mountain Empire just because a lot of you guys are behind us. So I'm gonna delay a little bit do a high speed. Maybe I'll just do a low pass since we're going so fast here. And then get back onto the route. I'll just fly over the runway. At maximum speed, Maverick style. Yes, underdogs right here. Dude, those winds are so good for that runway. Maybe a little too good. Underdog is airborne. We have liftoff. All right, I'm gonna do, what shape turn would this be? Not quite an S turn. I'm gonna make a left and then a U turn to the right. And hopefully we'll be grouped up pretty good. Steep turns day. Dragon, Marion 2 o'clock, 11 miles, 
Heading 243. 11 miles. Wait, what? <laughs> the back of the Marion Dragon? That's all she said in the heading. Sarah's being a little crazy. Oh no, I said crazy again. Oh my god. I think I have like a 50 word vocabulary and that's five of them. All right, goodbye, Mountain Empire. Whoa, what is this? Sarah, what's right below us? Is this just a glitch? <laughs> it looks like a golf course almost. Oh, is there water on top of that? Looks very glitchy. <laughs> Radioactive material. Comer's Rock Lookout is right below us. It's a popular tourist attraction known for its stunning panoramic views of the surrounding landscape. The lookout is located <laughs> on Comer's up. Rock, which is part of the Jefferson National Forest. It's a great spot for nature enthusiasts and hikers to enjoy the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian. Uh, those nature enthusiasts. This has been their, uh, their month as far as sightseeing. Leech Field Mine Pit? So it's not a glitch. It would be cool if you could turn on, like, um, if, if the point of interest markers, you could turn on, like, minor points of interest or something, where if it knows about things like that, it'll still put a marker on them, even though there's not, like, a custom structure or terrain or whatever for it. Just so you know you're flying over it could be kind of cool. Because we're probably flying over all sorts of, like, interesting areas and lookout points and unless Sarah says something about them we just have no idea so and if the Asobo team hasn't gone in and like added something for a world update then you know there's just so much stuff we're flying over no idea where we are you know what cool stuff might be below us uh, water cooled says the water that leaches out of mines get pumps gets pumped into pits like that and then they treat the water oh so it isn't hazardous so it is hazardous <laughs> so it being a, a toxic uh toxic waste dump isn't completely inaccurate it's where toxic waste goes to be cured and rehabilitated I'm gonna have to jettison the canopy when we do our rest stop. I wonder if you can put it back on. Probably not. Actually, I wonder if it affects your uh, affects the affects the aerodynamics of it. We take the entire canopy off. There's this very very tempting canopy jettison handle right here. Very tempting to hit this and <laughs> do it now. It's like an it's like a one use air brake, an always on air brake. You can hit it whenever you need to go really really slow. But you can impress your passenger. So Did she just shake her head? <laughs> hey Sarah, can you tell me what you think about us uh jettisoning the canopy of this plane while we're in flight. Do you think that's a good idea? Will it be exciting and entertaining or a bad idea? Tell us. This is Sarah, I guess. She's very, she's dressed very professionally for a tour guide. Jettisoning the canopy in flight is not recommended. Uh -oh. It would be unsafe and potentially dangerous. Mm. Let's keep the canopy on and enjoy the beautiful scenery below. 
but with the canopy off, we'll still be able to enjoy the scenery. She doesn't like it. <laughs> She's too safe. Come on, live a little. Just live a little bit, you know? Let's canop Let's jettison the canopy, yeah? Sound good? Hmm? What's up, Keith? Yeah, join us. We're a little to our north is VA11, Victor Alpha 11, White, so White I'm Oaks glad you're feeling adventurous. Uh, stand. Did you know that the Blue Ridge Highlands Fishing oh, that's Trail, all she's located say, but... at 2 o'clock, 13 miles away, <laughs> is a popular destination for fishing enthusiasts? The trail offers enthusiasts. access to some of the best fishing spots in the area, attracting anglers from all over. It's a great place to relax and enjoy the natural beauty of the Blue Ridge Highlands. Oh, the Comanche, nice, Jack. Yeah, you guys, you guys that are behind because of the winds and stuff, you could, um, you could either, yeah, use a sim acceleration, or you could just turn off, um, turn off live weather for now, just to get rid of the winds until you can catch up, maybe. Time acceleration is the best way for sure. God, I love the Comanche. It's been a while since I've flown the Comanche, mainly because on Tuesdays I've been, I've been flying the, um, well, I had to dust off the M500. So we did that, and then this week I did the Phoenix again. I'm tr I'm trying to not abandon the airliners. I think it, I don't know, I think it would be cool to get good enough where I'm like confident making like an absolute beginner's video, like a quick start guide for something like the Phoenix, but I think it might be a better idea to go for something like the 747 or, or maybe the 787 since those are both stock planes. Though I don't, I think the 787 is part of premium, right? If the any builds 320 is just good enough, like that would be that would be the one to go for, just because everybody has it. Turn it into a convertible. I think I'll wait until we're gonna do our uh, we're gonna do our pit stop, just in case it's catastrophic. <laughs> All right, altimeter is two nine or nine or three now. It's time to retire this song. Heard it way too many times. Sorry, song. You served you served your purpose for months, but you're gonna have to go now. Looks like I need to uh, activate our next waypoint or something here. A little bit out of sync. I don't know which waypoint we're on. Let's try this one. Mm, is this going to update? Oh, I chose the one ahead. I guess the flight plans don't sync. We got one, two, three, four ahead of where we are. Oh, I can't even see which one's active. Is it? Maybe it's removing them. Activate leg. Oh, there we go. A couple more. Oh, this thing is so painful. There, I think that's it. All right, that's a little better. It's weird these aren't these aren't coupled together like the 530 flight plan is separate from the G3X flight plan. What's up, Captain Russia? 28 knot headwinds. It's like a perfect headwind, too. Which plane should you use? I'm going about... When I'm straight level, I'm going like 160, 170. So it's up to you. It, it depends on if you want to be using time acceleration to catch up. Or if you want to uh, fly circles around us. I think what will be cool, I think next week... On Saturday, I want to. I think I want to get the South American mesh that we saw in the marketplace on Thursday, and find some routes that go through South America. And it would be cool to all fly like the same plane, or at least um, 
at least plan to fly, say, like um, a Kodiak or a Grand Caravan, for example. Planes that are like very similar. And I know it's kind of a free for all when we do these. It's just like, you don't know what I'm going to fly. So we just kind of pick what you like, but then we end up at different speeds. But if we all fly the same plane, it could be cool to get in like a tighter formation. Looks like we're about, are we gonna cross into Tennessee? Yeah, it looks like we're about to cross into Tennessee. It's right to the to our left, to the south, is the border with Tennessee, between Virginia and Tennessee. We're already a quarter of the way done. The city of Damascus. Town, city. Like every city, I saw an Amazon Prime truck driving around. We can't escape them. Should you make a model airport? Oh, you were building like the model 172, weren't you? If you're interested in uh, you, what you could do, I, I know you're, you're talking about like uh, like modeling it in the real world, but if you're, oh, you're not? Who is, uh, somebody on the Discord like a few weeks back was posting themselves working on model, um, model planes. I thought it was you, I, I guess I'm wrong. You could consider doing the world hub stuff and uh, fixing airports like that you like. I haven't tried it myself yet, but I don't know what kind of skills you need. Do you guys know, do you need uh, for the World Hub if you want to contribute to an airport and like fix things or add a few more accurate objects to the airport for the World Hub? Do you have to learn Blender or something like that? I know Blender is, f I think Blender is free, right? Or at least free to get started with. They're totally gonna make the World Hub something people can You're add buildings to US anywhere Coast in the world. Guard elevation marker. This marker is an important point of interest for hikers, campers, and outdoor enthusiasts. It was established to provide elevation reference points for the U.S. Coast Guard and is now a popular spot for nature oh, lovers and adventurers. Source. The marker serves as a reminder of the importance of accurate elevation measurements in outdoor activities. My God, we've got a group. Oh yeah, Blender's free and open source. So yeah, I, I was thinking if you're interested in doing, I don't know what you mean by air modeling an airport, but uh, are you saying mo like a model or? Anyway, I think it's I think it's cool that people with uh, some Blender skills can can update the airports. It'd be cool if they had it so you could like launch the airport editor within the sim itself, like as a main activity, or like it could be buried in some menus. Oh, model. It would be it would be so cool if they had their own tool like in their SDK to modify the airports. I'm not sure if, is that how it works? I, have, I haven't used the World Hub at all. I just know that 
in the beta, actually now it's been postponed until after the beta, but in the next um, like nav data update, they're going to include the airports that people have fixed. Then there were like 20 something airports that people have updated in the with the world hub. What's up onboard sim? Have you seen the Kodiak 900? I think I did I I think I saw heard about it or saw them like months ago. I don't I haven't seen any uh, any new ones. There are new images. I'll have to take a look. Let me see if I can get that up on my on my browser here on the side. Yeah, it looks like the announcement was in February. I haven't seen the new ones though. Hey Leslie, I'm in the Vans RV14. I pretty much chose it just because it, well, it's it's pretty fast, but it also has this like really good visibility because of this like full glass canopy. So this is the, yeah, the RV14A. Arf, Arf, the A variant is the tricycle nose, nose gear one. Um, but there's a, the regular RV14 is a tail dragger. And then there's also an RV10. Both are by uh, Simwork Studios, who makes the uh, Kodiak. Are your PC crashed? No. It's okay. We'll, we'll be passing by a lot of airports. You can catch up. No problem. New Simwork Studios post two hours ago. Oh, on Facebook. That's why I didn't see it. I don't think I've used Facebook in like, I don't know, five plus years. Hopefully they get uh, posted to Reddit or like the Microsoft Flight Sim forums or something. Um, Turk says you start around the airport you want to update in the sim. Oh, it enters like an editor mode within the sim itself. Oh yeah, if you have flow, you can teleport, yep. Yeah, I did use the teleport stuff finally on Thursday. That was pretty cool. Okay, so they are making it more accessible. It's not like only people that can do 3D modeling can update it. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I hope... I'm guessing their plan is to extend it beyond airports so people can like update cities and stuff like that with buildings. I'm just flying over here to make sure I hit this waypoint so it sequences to the next one. What's up, Chase? Coming up to nice mountains in a little bit? Yes. That's what we want to see. All right, I hit that waypoint on the 530 at least. The G3X touch flight plane's a little messed up still, but we can, we can see the white line still. As long as one of them is in sync, we're good to go. See another RV14 back there. Oh, Cyber's in the RV14 as well. And Mrs. T5-17. Alright, we're at the 45-minute mark. We'll do like another 15 minutes or so of flying, and then we'll take a little rest off at a nearby airport. Now oh, maybe this one down here, NC06 on the map. Maybe that's a candidate. We'll see when we get closer. Or we'll just pick a nice grass field somewhere. Oh, 
Uh, why does some Turk says why does some planes fly the same flight flight plan differently? I mean, if everybody's using autopilot, then it is possible that. So, for example, in the RV14, this is not this is not is not using any of the working title software. Working title when they worked on the G1000 and then you know all the subsequent Garmin stuff, um, and then even like the the citations, they also redid the autopilots so all of the the like super modern precise autopilot functionality is part of the working title stuff so like this plane for example is not using the working title software we have like um i don't think it is at least because um usually the avionics are coupled with the autopilot logic so there's no g1000 in this we do have the 530 but i have a feeling that the g3x is like overriding it and this is still the old G3X. But it could, yeah, it could just be different autopilot software. And then, like, the Phoenix, for example, will have, I think it uses its own autopilot. Um, some developers have taken advantage of the working title autopilot software, though, because they open sourced it. Then they called it, like, WTT, like, working title technology or something like that. And it's, like, open sourced and available for devs to use. So the PMS 50, uh, the PMS 50 GTN 750, for example, um, that uses the working title open source software for its um, for its autopilot stuff nowadays. Or at least, or at least you have add-ons where certain planes will use it. They have like WTT packages at a heading of 257. The Elizabethan Covered Bridge is a historic landmark and the only remaining covered bridge in the state of Tennessee. It was built in 1882 and is a popular attraction for history enthusiasts and photographers. The bridge is a beautiful example of 19th century engineering and craftsmanship, and it's a must-see for anyone interested in the history of the area. I think we're going to have to relieve Sarah because she won't stop saying the same phrases. We're going to bring Jeff in. He's a professional as well. But maybe we'll get some variation here in the, in the phrases we keep hearing over and over again. Oh, we're in your neighborhood now? Dude, this looks so awesome right here. The Watuga Dam is what it says on the world map. And it says Horseshoe over here. Oh. This does kind of look like a horseshoe, doesn't it? Is there a city, like a town named Horseshoe? It just says Horseshoe. Put on your parachute, Sarah. Yeah. That jettison button is going to come in handy. Sorry, we're, we're replacing Sarah with Jeff. We're going to have to swap out the... <laughs> Sarah's got to go. Sorry, Sarah. All right, Sarah's being replaced with Jeff. I don't think Jeff is a dog, so we're going to have to find a human here. There. He's going to be wearing the leathers just like us. What up, Jeff? Welcome. Cannonball Empire headset or something? Are we always in someone's neighborhood? Yeah, apparently we're always in, like, usually it's like Chris or Mike, their uncle always lives wherever we are in the world, so yes, technically accurate. We're always in one of their family members' neighborhoods, apparently. Oh, smooth, you're having problems with the sim too? Man, even in the middle of nowhere like this? That's a bummer. Like, usually when you're, like, more remote, things run pretty good. Away from the, uh, the major airports and cities. My load times are pretty insane, though. I, I had to restart the sim a few times before, uh, before starting the stream. And, yeah, it just takes, like, I don't know. I feel like it takes almost 10 minutes to start it. But I do have a lot of the world updates installed. All right, Jeff, could you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Let's see if you can give us a nice, nice introduction here. Tell us about your leather-bound coat. There we 
We just got a nice, nice 20 knot crosswind now. We love it. Where's the girl? She, uh... I'm happy to provide some interesting information about the area. Let's start with the Shelving Rock Encampment, located five miles ahead at a heading of 159. The Shelving Rock she had Encampment to leave. is a historic site in the Lake George area of New York. It was used as a military training camp during the American Revolutionary War and played a significant role in the region's history. Visitors to this site can explore the remains of the encampment and learn about the soldiers who trained there. History enthusiasts, nature oh, lovers, no. and those interested in the Revolutionary War era will find the Shelving Rock encampment to be a fascinating and educational destination. Always with the history enthusiasts. Oh no, Jeff is just Sarah with a different voice. He's saying the same things. Yeah, we had to let uh, use the canopy jettison and drop Sarah off back there. She's fine, though. She'll be back. Oh, man. Dude, this town looks awesome with the river coming, like, right through the middle of it. What? This is probably really pretty. In the real world. If that's accurate. Maybe there's not supposed to be water there. Oh, it looks like looks like there should be. That looks awesome. Water cooled was right about the mountains getting getting better and better. Uh, the terrain around here is really cool. We're back in the pretty parts. They don't have a friend named Toby, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of enthusiasts. I wonder if they've made, I don't know if they've made uh, updates to it or not, like the tour guide logic and trained it more or something like that. It's still a cool feature. There's actually, uh, I could try, this wasn't working the last time I tried it, but there's a mode where you can have it pick a different one each time called tour guide party. It says they take turns talking about the sites. We'll see if that works now. Tell us something about this area of the world now. Let's see who responds. If it's Jeff again, either we're unlucky or it's not working. Lots of cool stuff around here, man. Mountains, trails, and historical spots. It's a chill place to be. Is that Janet? All right, it is. It looks like it does work where it picks a random, a random tour guide. Sweet. Get some variety going here. Is Jeff reading Wikipedia? Probably. Yeah, I don't know where they source it. I mean, I, I think it's just chat GPT driven. So whatever it's, whatever it's trained off of those uh, generic LLM, whatever, AI uh, models. I think it uses ChatGPT4 for everything. Not the voice generation, but for all the, you know, generating the logic for, or generating the scripts, basically. Getting a workout here with all this, uh, all this manual flying with these winds. I still don't have the best ergonomics for this stick, though. Like the the Verpal stick is really nice, but I guess I would need to like. <laughs> there, if I pull my microphone like way back, I'm standing right now. But if I pull it like way back, then my arm is a little more straight. It's kind of awkward how far the mount holds the stick away from the desk, though. So like if I'm sitting here, instead of having the stick here, the stick is more like here. If I'm seated, if I'm standing and I step back a bit, I, I can get it around here. Like it's like a 45 degree angle to my left, like from my, from my hip to the stick. So my arm is like, you know, rotated outward instead of being like perfectly straight. 
I guess I could just like move it to be more centered. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to set up a mount because you have the keyboard and the mouse. I would like it to actually be like centered and sit down and have it like right in between my legs like it is in the plane here would be pretty nice. But then you have to um, like kind of reach around it to hit the keyboard and the mouse and you could bump it a lot. I don't know. It's, it's kind of challenging to get a good spot for it to be. I think maybe that's an advantage that a yoke has over a side stick. You just have it centered and probably put like with the alpha, you put your keyboard on top of it. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, the ergonomics of, uh, of using a stick is a little, a little weird, but I love that it's out of the way. Like when I'm not using it or I have autopilot on, like it's just out of the way to the side and I can just use my keyboard and mouse. Alright, I'm sitting now. Yeah, my, I think I need to find a better position for my... For my stick. I don't know if I have many options though. I kind of want a desk. I don't know if they even make this, but... If there was a desk that was designed... Um, how do I... How do I convey this? Basically, the, the front left and the front right corner of the desk would be like cut away, like recessed back. So it's like a really thick letter T, basically. So then the mounts would be pushed back, like they wouldn't be at the front edge of the desk where they're attached, if that makes sense. So like if this is the desk, instead of the mount being attached like here in the front corner and here in the front corner, this part would be cut away here and here so they could be mounted here and here almost like a giant keyboard tray shaped desk you know where like the keyboard tray the front part of the desk it's all still one piece but the front part is like yeah it's like a big th like a thick letter t because then that would push the sticks away from you a bit if they're on if they're on mounts hmm wonder if that exists What's up, Robert? Yeah, centering this stick, I think it's a good... I might have to try that. Maybe when we, when we land and take a break soon, we'll find a, find a nearby airport to break at. I think I'm gonna move my stick to be right in the middle. I might have to like lower my chair even more, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, Mike, you're thinking the same thing? You thought about buying wood, making a desk of a specific shape. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking a big a thick letter T shaped desk where the mounts can be pushed away from you further, like towards the monitor, to compensate for how how far out the mount the mounts hold the stick from the desk. I'll have to like bring out a uh, Microsoft Paint or something. Ooh, we're getting the draft. We're getting the uh, updrafts here. You'll jump in. Do I know when we're la when we're landing? I think we should do this one right here. Coming up, three three November Romeo, right here to the south. Skyline Peak, five minutes ahead. Three three November Romeo, three three N R. Looks like a looks like a good option right along the route. I don't see this. Uh, I don't see this airport on Navigraph either. Skyline Peak. Mars Hill.
All right, guys. Three, three, N, R is where we're going to stop for a little break. I'm going to put in a direct two. Mars Hill. Yeah, it's like right on our course. A little bit to the left, of course. Off course. <laughs> and then I'll make the uh, bold move of moving my stick to be centered on my desk and see how, uh, how that feels. Just have to make sure I don't uh, run into it, let's say, <laughs> with it like between my legs <laughs> to like lower my seat down, maybe awkwardly low, so I don't like move my legs and bump into it. I don't know. I mean, using the stick off to the side a little bit is not horrible if you have a chair, a seat with a chair with a uh, armrest on it. It's not that bad. You're like. But uh, when I was standing the first hour of the flight, it's, um, yeah, definitely a little uncomfortable to have my arm, like, cocked out to the left a bit. Oh, here it is. Skyline Peak. Three miles. Still west coast. Yep. All right, what are the runway headings here? Two, four, and six. All right, two, four. Lost Cove Settlement is a cool spot, man. It's like a hidden gem in the mountains. Around there. I think that was supposed to be Travis. All right, I see the strip right there. Looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a crosswind from the right. It looks like 2-4 is the preferred runway. Winds are 2-6-5 at 20 knots. Oh man, this is gonna be hard. Yeah, if you swing out to the left and then turn right to line up for 2-4. Looks pretty good. We've been having a great time on these flights with these, these ridiculous crosswinds. What'd you do to Janet? We have the uh, morphing, the the shape-shifting tour guide in the seat now, so it, sh it goes between the uh, all four tour guides randomly. Uh-oh, stalling. Oh no. You have to put a notch of flaps up. We're, almost, we're getting like too slowed by the wind. 20 knots. Oh no. All right, this is kind of terrifying. 500. Oh my god, these winds are insane. Power, power. Oh my god. No. <laughs> this is the worst landing ever. 23 knots. Dude, the delay, I'm just gonna have to force it down. The delay on the the throttle in this thing is unreal. It takes a very long time for it to like spool back up. Good thing it's a long paved runway. That was definitely a go around. All right, that was terrifying. What are we back? We're back in PNG. <laughs> yeah, that was a milk for sure. <laughs> Nowhere near butter yet. <laughs> My God, that is scary. All right, now I'll watch all you guys land better than I did because that was a disaster. Oh no, somebody crashed. It was almost me. Yeah, look at that windsock. 
There are many adjectives to describe the windsock. We will go with full. It is, uh, it is simply full. Worst landing ever, yeah, 100%. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> I landed in the last like third of the runway. That was definitely a go around. I was surprised uh, the the RV14 that there's like a significant amount of lag between changing the power settings. I feel like it's like more than a like a jet almost, <laughs> or like it's uh it's pretty insane. If you uh, if you don't want an extremely difficult landing, I would recommend turning off live weather temporarily. These crabs. Nigel didn't even have a crab really going on. The sim froze the whole way down. Good luck, underdog. Is that the is that the king air? <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Yeah, I just had to like force it down. Cyber's experiencing what I was experiencing. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't know if he's just messing with us. <laughs> oh, there's a king air. Stanley pants. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, let's see if he can stick it. At least the, the runway is a decent length. Uh oh, maybe not. Go around. See the braking power on that thing into the sticks maybe a little bit. Wait for me. Yeah, we're going to take a couple minutes uh, for a break here. At Skyline Peak. Alright, Turk. Good luck. I believe in you. An FX. Look at that crab. Okay, I think maybe Turk turned off the uh, live weather, which is a good move. Because like, he's just coming straight in. Compared to the FX's crab that's going on right now. <laughs> yeah, I would Good, good move to turn off the live weather on this one. Look at how crabbed he is. That's crazy. The Chancellor. These kind of landings will be uh, really interesting once we get the sim up, when the sim update comes out, and then all the plane developers can update to use the new like tire physics and stuff. Hopefully, it's uh, makes it a little easier to land because just when you touch down. Can just pull you so hard to the side. It's always done that. It'll be nice when uh when we get some improvements there. Stigmatism's down. Da forty two. I wonder what uh, da forty two got um got a got an update that I downloaded. I didn't look at the release notes yet. Please, everyone, fly with live weather. Yes, for our entertainment. Oh no, Loki. <laughs> uh, flight plan, Robert, is in the... Um, it's in the video description, but the, the problem is that if you load it in at this point, it'll, it'll start you at the first airport. Um, it's also in the Discord if you're in there. It's in the group flights channel. Or you can go to the World Tours website and the link in the video description. Um, yeah, the the downside to loading in the flight plan though is because it starts at the very first airport and we're halfway through. I guess if you have if you have something like if you have flow, you could load in at the starting airport and then use the portal thing here to teleport teleport to where we are.
That was a nice and smooth vision jet landing. Yeah, that was a. This, this is gonna make for some fun takeoffs, too. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna reposition my stick to the center. Let's see how this works. Put up the rest stop. Little rest stop timer for now. This is interesting, having a centered stick. I feel like when I see screenshots of people with their like home cockpit style setups, like with the chairs, like the specific chairs, it has to, it's not bad. I think it might be a little like too high. Luckily I can adjust the height of my desk. Yeah, this will be this will be interesting. I basically just move my I move my stick mount to have the stick right here, basically where it's shown here in the plane itself. It's not it's not bad. In my my endless hunt for a really good broadcast quality uh, headset microphone, I do have a new one coming in the next week. That'll make this setup even better. Just having having the giant microphone with a giant like arm that reaches across your desk is so annoying. <laughs> Just been on a constant hunt for a really good quality headset mic. Most of them are pretty bad. Like just a regular gaming head headset like doesn't cut it. All right, this is a. Uh, I, d I should have done this before the landing because I would have had an excuse. Fly in the Grand Canyon with jets. It's been a while since we've done something like that, like ornithopters or whatever. Uh, which headset? I I found this like unknown one. It's not an unknown brand. It's, ba it's like Bayer Dynamic. Is it the 7... Oh, what is the headset? I keep forgetting the model name. The DT-797. It's hard to find. It, it's, it basically looks like the Bayer or Bayer Dynamic DT-770s. Um, yeah, it's the DT-797PV. So it's, and it's got like a broadcast quality microphone on it. Kind of like there's an audio technical one that looks like that. And I watched a YouTube video about it. And it just sounded really good. DT979, or sorry, 797. Here it is. I'm bringing up a YouTube video. There's an ad playing right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Studio So this Pro. guy, you can see that I've got the headset mic. Yeah, this is the one the he's Sennheiser talking through right now is the headset away. mic. This is the Bayer Dynamic DT797PV. It just it's sounds really a good. Headset that I saw, I was very interested in it because of its sound. It's a condenser microphone, so more of a This is this this channel on YouTube. richer 
better sound for me, quite honestly, than a lot of the dynamic. Yeah, so and he's using I, this guy's using what I'm using, which around. is the roadcaster. Um, he's using the pro version, like the, the bigger one. I have the smaller roadcaster. Um, but it sounds oh, so maybe a it sounds really good. Compressed. Let's see, it's got depth, sparkle, and punch, probably. And then he does another one over here where he uh, he compares it with this Sennheiser headset. That This is like something you see sports broadcasters where I feel like um, this one sounds a lot more trebly. Light. Um, they don't wear on you as much as the biodynamics. 50 range, somewhere in there to kind of clear This up versus the this. And then I don't think, we, like I said before, 55 dB critical listening audience oh he is a sports broadcaster oh i i have i'm totally unaware caster i just found this random youtube channel it was like the only youtube channel showing this headset oh that's really cool well there you go yeah the the sennheiser one looks really nice too but i think the issue with it is that um the ear the the actual um ear cups are small they're like on ear instead of over ear so that kind of turned me off because I want something that can um, that I can use um, that I can use long term and just when I'm gaming and stuff too. I feel like the on ear stuff might get uncomfortable after a while, but who knows? Maybe I'll end up with the Sennheiser one, but I'm gonna try the the Bayer Dynamic one first. Whoa! Let's check our trim here. Brody Brazil. Oh, he's on Sportsnet, also a main broadcaster for the San Jose Sharks games. Oh, nice. I mean, yeah, he sounds like he sounds like a professional. But yeah, he's the he's the only one on YouTube I could see. Maybe there, maybe there's one other one, but that was a uh, a good video to hear the quality difference. And he did a bunch of um, you know tests with like the different settings on his Roadcaster with it. So it sounds really good. And um, yeah, I tried another headset, the Rode headset that came out recently, like a month or two ago, and it just picks up a lot of room sound. I don't know why they and it's it's a really teeny tiny microphone on that on that road headset but yeah that one is pretty nice i found it on sweetwater was like the only place i could find it um and it's weird it's just not uh i don't see it advertised much so it, it seems like this like you know it's like a sleeper headset like it seems like most people don't know about it um, where is the trim indicator in this thing? I think my trim is extremely nose up right now. And I don't, where is the trim wheel in this? Maybe, I think it just meant to use electric trim only right here. Maybe I just have to look at the, uh, look at the actual, is there an tr actual trim tab? Not really seeing it move. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't know how to set the trim in this guy. Like, I don't see any indicator anywhere. This will make for a great takeoff. Oh. <laughs> All right. I think the trim is up. What is going on here? <laughs> We're just doing wheelies. The airport's closed on Navigraph. Yeah, I, I noticed it's not on the it's not in the Navigraph data. But it's here in Microsoft Flight Sim still, so. Hey, I'm a tail dragger now. What is going on? Whoa. Oh, is my brake stuck on? My parking brake is off. Rear heavy? I don't think so. I just have the I have the fuel co-pilot these are some heavier pilot weights lower those a little bit this will help me with the takeoff 30 pounds in the in the rear baggage area there we go oh my god <laughs> this has been a while since this song played ah saved yet again on the ground on the ground, we're saved. We'll have to listen to it though. Ate too much during the break, yeah. I am so lucky. This has happened like three times in a row when we've been on the ground. 
Oh god, this song is so bad. So we need to turn the volume up. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, fine muscle. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> this is my jam. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Please rise for our national anthem. <laughs> oh, I'm so lucky. What a strange song. Think how strange the person is that made this song. It's just very weird. <laughs> a nice stall tone. <laughs> oh man. Fast forward like 10 years from now, I finally fly in a plane. Once I get comfortable and stuff, Flying along and like my girlfriend trolls me by putting this song on in the plane in real life. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> A ringer. The ringer cannot look empty, dude. The whites. My dirty laundry. <laughs> Practices her stalls without telling you while playing that song. Oh, man. Thankfully, she's not, uh, thankfully, she's too nice to do that, I think, <laughs> to do something like that to me. All right, let's see. User waypoint 11 to 12. So we'll activate the leg for user waypoint 12. <laughs> All right, I don't know what my trim setting is, so this could be a disastrous takeoff. As can all of my takeoffs. All right, we got 23 knot headwind. If the nose starts coming up really fast, then well, that, it's the it's to thank the headwind. But uh, oh no, my trim is two nose down now. Oh, I'm I'm dead. I'm dead. I can't even turn it. I'm full left rudder. Why is this happening? Rip. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How do I reset the trim in this thing? <laughs> Everybody else is fine. <laughs> what is going on? All right, let me try to make my way back. <laughs> Mayday. What is going on? I was full left rudder. Does this have nose wheel steering? It does. It, it even has nose wheel steering. It's not like free casting or anything. This is not good. Set the trim reset button and flow. Oh, that's a good idea. Very good idea. Gear, reset, barometer. I could change one of these. Reset trim. Reset all trims. Oh my God, brilliant. Great idea there, onboard sim. Reset all trims. Yeah, but. Thanks to you, now I have no excuse. Crap. Okay, trims are all reset. Yeah, there's no... I don't I don't see a trim wheel or a trim indicator. We're just... We're just... Wheeling anyway. Um... Yeah, it seems like there should be a, a digital trim indicator somewhere since... I guess it only uses electric trim? <laughs> Alright. Uh, the reasons for the failure are uh, definitely... I have numerous excuses. I just moved my stick position. I am a horrible sim pilot. There's so many excuses. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Left rudder. I'm almost full left rudder. Okay, that was much better. The ailerons into the wind actually helped that time. I feel like normally, when I do ailerons into the wind, it makes it extremely chaotic in the sim. Welcome to 
Tennessee sign is two. Oh, Clock, thank you. Two miles, heading 287. It's a tourist attraction and point of interest establishment. I think maybe I'm under um, underestimating the power of the engine in this thing too. Yeah, Keith says that's the best excuse. Hey man, I'm just bad at this. <laughs> man, the stick the stick position <laughs> This is gonna sound bad, but having the stick between the legs, it's pretty good. I kind of like it. I, my, my arm is way more relaxed than it normally is. Like, normally I have my elbow up on my, um, the armrest, the left armrest of my seat. But having the stick <laughs> right in between my legs feels great. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't save that. Oh crap, there's a VOD, isn't there? Anyway, having the flight stick right, right centered is pretty good. <laughs> for the repairs, thanks for the $5 super chat, Raccoon. <laughs> for the repairs, thanks, dude. <laughs> Soul with the eyes peeking through the fingers emote. <laughs> but it, it's it's kind of nice. I've seen um I've seen pictures of those like intense flight sim chairs where there there is like a mount right in between your legs in the in the middle of the seat itself like for your stick. Like ergonomic, yeah, it's kind of nice. What's a little weird is the stick itself is flush, like oriented perfectly horizontal, you know, centered, not rotated. So it's a little weird having the ergonomics of the stick itself uh, feel a little weird since my arm isn't going straight onto the stick. Like with a straight arm, my arm is uh, now rotated to the left a little bit. So like using the twist axis, axis is a little weird. What's up, Andy? Happy Easter to you too. Bet it's comfortable. <laughs> it's not, it's not bad at all. Don't check Discord. What? what? I don't see anything crazy happening in Discord. Looks fine to me. Did a mod take care of something? Was there some, did we get some more spam in there? I might have to up the security settings and require like phone numbers or something like that to cut down on the spam. Uh, Andy says, I just got back from Academy Sports. What's Academy Sports? Is it like a batting cages or something? I went to, um, I went to Top Golf here in LA for the first time last week it was pretty fun i'm really bad at uh hitting a golf ball but yeah mad respect for people that can golf it's insanely difficult it's been a long time since i've been to a, a driving range in general um and my two buddies i went with are uh, very athletic I, I, I haven't been athletic the last few years but i used to be a lot more um into like uh rock climbing and cycling and stuff like that for a long time but yeah, definitely been a sloth lately. Um, but yeah, the, the buddies I went with are just like cracking them to the fence, basically like to the net in the back almost. Um, I'm hitting them like, you know, two thirds or like half the distance and missing most of the time. It's uh, it's surprisingly difficult. I don't know if any of you guys have golfed or tried to like go onto a driving range. It's really satisfying when you get a good, when you get a good hit though. Top golf, yeah, it was really fun too. We went pretty early, so there were a lot of like families there. We went; it wasn't too rowdy or anything. But yeah, good selection of beer. The food was decent, um, and so we were just there. Like, got a two-hour, uh, got one of the bays for two hours or whatever. It's a good time. It was really interesting. Like my buddy uh, who gave me some tips, who's way better at it than me. He was just like. Basically, he's like, if you cannot think about it, you'll hit the ball better. Like, don't even think about hitting the ball hard. It's so counterintuitive. Like, I felt like the more effort I put in, the worse I was. And when I just, like, totally relaxed and didn't even think about it, and I didn't even do a full swing. He had me do, like, a half swing the whole time. And I was just getting pretty good contact on the ball. It's really fun. Yeah, what Mike said, yeah. 
Mike says it's humbling doing sports stuff with buddies that know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I was, I got uh, pretty good at cycling. Like I've done a lot of long distance cycling and group riding and stuff like that. I'm, I'm crap at racing. I'm not fast enough for racing, um, but endurance wise, like I got pretty good. But besides that, I haven't really gotten great at any kind of sport. Uh, Key says I was always athletic, but could never hit a golf ball. <laughs> Dude, it's so hard. I played a fair amount of hockey growing up too, and but I, I my excuse is I played goalie, so and I, I never had a good swing. I played I played a little ice hockey when I first moved to California. Played defense in ice hockey. It was really fun. I am not built like an ice hockey player though. <laughs> I'm definitely built like a cyclist, not like an ice hockey player. But I love I love hockey. Uh, Andy says I hate playing sports, but I like watching sports. Yeah, I, I used to watch a lot more sports than I do now. I'm not really playing or doing any sports now, unless it's considered an esport, <laughs> and then I can't compete. Uh, a buddy of mine's like super into Valorant, and he got me to load up Valorant last night. I'm so bad right now. <laughs> My aim is the worst. All right, professional tour guide, we need uh, you to give us some information here. Uh, and he says I might try following F1 this year. Oh yeah, when we were at Top Golf, like my my two buddies I went with were uh, uh, they watched some of F1 that were F1 was on the TV. On the screens there when we when we got there, sure so thing. they were stoked about Let's that. Start with the Rattler. This is a I did check out Warframe. I played it for played it for it about two hours. and offers visitors an exhilarating ride through the treetops, providing stunning views of the surrounding area. People of all ages enjoy this adventure, and it's a great way to experience the natural beauty of the region from a unique perspective. I didn't want to interrupt Sarah there. I think that's Sarah. It almost sounds like a new voice. Um, I did, yeah, so I tried Warframe for a little bit, and then it kind of got me to go back to Destiny, just because I kind of missed the PvE stuff, so I played a little Destiny recently. But yeah, I played like two hours of Warframe. It's definitely, it, it's interesting, it's very, very fast-paced, so yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um, I just only played that one night so far. There's just too many things to play right now. Like, I'm playing a bit of Star Citizen. I was playing Valorant with another friend last night that's super into Valorant. I was trying to get... He tried Tarkov for a little bit. Um, he tried Destiny. I've been playing a little Destiny. Uh, playing a little Elite Dangerous. I just apparently can't make up my mind what to play outside of Flight Sim right now. But... But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just enjoying myself playing all, all sorts of different stuff. Oh, Mike is playing Dragon's Dogma, too. I haven't played it myself yet. I just watched it on stream a few times. It looks pretty fun. Almost like reminds me of like The Witcher or something. Just like a a large scale like hack and slash style RPG kind of game. I would play something like that more than I would pick up something like Baldur's Gate. Like I personally am not uh, not a huge fan of turn based stuff like all the uh, like Baldur's Gate and Divinity those kind of games. Yeah, F1, F1 is super entertaining. Like, I I watched the F1 series on Netflix, like, season one and a little of season two. Are they on, like, season three or four now? Maybe more? Um, that series is so well produced, too, that for somebody like me who's not, like, following the actual races, it's super entertaining. You know, I'm sure there's tons of, like, edits to make it more dramatic than it really is and controversial and all that stuff. Like, any kind of reality-ish type show or series, you know? But, uh, yeah, Formula One. Oh, season six. Yeah, I guess it's been a minute since I've watched it. <laughs>
Oh, you didn't know it was a series. Yeah, it's probably the only reason to subscribe to Netflix nowadays. All right, maybe maybe there's some other decent stuff on Netflix, but yeah, the uh, what is it called? Um, uh, what's the name of the series? I was gonna say the Need for Speed. Uh, oh, Drive to Survive. Yeah, Formula One Drive to Survive on Netflix. <laughs> Chatting here, my plane crashed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm also just staring at the chat too. We just have Flight Sim going on in the background. Let's try to remember to follow that pink line, that magenta line here. <laughs> uh, Soul says, I hope F1 isn't doing like Marvel. Putting stuff everywhere? Do you mean like overdoing how much they ha like how much they're creating, how much content they're creating? Uh, F1 cars and indie cars are dope. Yeah, yeah, racing is really exciting. I've never I've never followed it. Like even in all the time I cycled, I didn't really follow like uh, professional cycling much or anything like that. But whenever I do watch that stuff, I enjoy it. I just don't turn it on. You know, same with all sports in general. Like I can turn on and watch almost anything, but I just don't turn it on. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, you don't want them to overdo it, make too much about it, yeah. Like oversaturate it to the point where you're just like tired of seeing it. Live races are epic. I have never been to a live race. A really long time ago, I got to, I did a race on uh, Laguna Seca racetrack on my bike. I think I hit like almost 60 miles an hour on the downhill on my bike, <laughs> my race bike. <laughs> It was a long time ago, but I got to ride on that racetrack. It was so cool. I don't know if they're still doing the race there, uh, but there was a, yeah, there was a cycling race that happened there every year. Oh, they race in Japan next weekend. How'd I like Laguna Seca? I mean, riding a bike on it was incredible. I was so bad at racing though. I was in like division four, like public race or whatever. And like, Everyone just dusted me right off the bat. Like we started the part where you start on the uphill right at the start of the race. And I'd never raced once in my entire life. And uh, I just got dropped so fast on the first hill. And I just could never catch up with anybody. <laughs> so I just enjoyed the ride. I finished it, but I, I was like dead last. Or I wasn't dead last. I was like, you know, bottom 10% or whatever. It was really bad. But yeah, I don't know anything about cycling racing. So like, and I'd never done it. I was just like, yeah, let's go race on the racetrack. It'll be fun. But the, the track was incredible. It was a lot of fun. A little terrifying hitting like over 50 miles an hour on the downhill. But um, you just hope that your wheels stay on. <laughs> I had like an older aluminum frame bike too then. I didn't have any a nice carbon bike like I did recently. Oh, uh, Turk says huge controversy and drama will be in series seven. They just, I'm sure they try to add the drama on every season. They're like, this will be great. We're in Cali. They have F1 races in Long Beach. Yeah, I, have, I haven't met to any. I would see MotoGP as well. I don't know that I'm as interested in NASCAR. I know there's a lot of strategy in NASCAR racing. Uh, I have a family member that watched it for a long time and, you know, tried to get me into it for a bit. But yeah, I don't, I, just all racing is very interesting. I just know nothing about it. Love Laguna Seca, awesome track. Yeah, don't don't they catch air before that like, main downhill? It's been it's been forever since I yeah since I was on that track. Cool stuff though, just a cool experience. We are in the mountains now. Whew. Headwinds all day. No air, that would be bad. Dang. I feel like the Formula One cars could totally catch air. <laughs> the goodness sake has NASCAR and MotoGP.
Man, we had to climb up quite a bit here. Passing 6,000 feet right now. What is 6,000, right? Yeah, 6,000. The S turn, yep. Yeah, on a bicycle, it was scary going down that turn. <laughs> Can't imagine in a, in like a, a motorcycle going like 150 miles an hour or whatever. I don't know what they take those turns at. A hundred, a little under a hundred. I have no idea. Can the van's plane catch an updraft? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the updrafts and downdrafts and turbulent stuff, I think affects every single plane in the sim. So yeah, I'm definitely bouncing around here a little bit. You just see the tail fly up right there. Here, my hand is off the stick right now. Should get a little, little draft here as we go over. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, right there. The MotoGP guys seem insane. Yeah. Over the Appalachian National Scenic Trail, a historic trail that stretches over 2,000 miles from Georgia to Maine. It's a popular destination for hikers and outdoor enthusiasts, offering stunning views of the Appalachian Mountains and diverse wildlife. Oh, the is this a good gliding spot? That's a good question. We can turn on the thermals, the right? Here we go. It's a must visit for anyone who loves Oh, the yeah, the right here outdoors. is a great spot. There's, there aren't even any clouds here, and look at the thermals. Yeah, if you go to the bottom of the weather menu down here, you can turn on the thermal visibility. This is... This section right here is amazing. I don't know which airport you would start at, though. There's one down here to the south. Oh, yeah, the Isle of Man time trial races. I've seen videos of that, yeah. It's insane. I was gonna say crazy, but I thought I'd spice it up a little and use a different word. <laughs> Yeah, I think I saw a ton of uh, Isle of Man videos like a while back on YouTube, watching that that course. Which airport? Um, it, uh, to our south is five seven November Charlie. Five seven NC. It's kind of it's a little bit off our course, but we're gonna like skirt around it. It looks like. Need to know what plane that is. This is the Vans RV14. Uh, it's by Simwork Studios. It's the same developer that made the Kodiak. It just got a really good. I'm mainly flying it because it has a really good, really good visibility on this like gla this glass canopy that it has. Oh, I forgot to jettison the canopy. I'll have to see. I'll have to try to remember uh, to do it when we're making our final landing. Uh, yeah, but Simwork Studios makes the... This is the RV14. This is going to get better once the G3X Touch gets updated. The working title team has a new G3X Touch that they've made, which is in the Sim Update 15 beta. Um, that got delayed a little bit until... Um, well, it's almost next month, but I think it's sometime in April. But this will, this will become even better once it's using the working title G3X Touch. Um... There's a, the RV14 has two variants. So this is the trike version. So we got nose wheel, nose wheel uh, uh, gear here, uh, fix, fixed or tricycle gear. And then there's also, a, there's also a tail, a tail wing variant, tail dragger variant. Um, and then there's also an RV10, which I think that's a tricycle gear one. I think the 14 is just faster. But they have working circuit breakers, and they both have really good visibility like this. I mean, the SimWorks Studio stuff is great. Yeah, somebody earlier was asking about the, uh, talking about the Kodiak 900 that they're working on. I think these are in the marketplace too. I think I got them both from the marketplace, the RV14 and the RV10. Uh, I would also consider, this one's a bit faster than the Sting, but the Sting S4 is also really good. It's another two-seater, uh, like um, light sport aircraft, kind of like this. Uh, it's a bit slower than this one though. This one, we've been going like 160 pretty much the whole time. I think the Sting goes more like 120, 130. 
it is pretty slow. It's like the speed of a 172. Uh, but it, but it's also it's a very good plane. It's got a tablet and everything, um, and wear and tear and stuff like that. It's got a oh yeah, the Sting S4 has a working parachute like you would see on a Cirrus. Uh, you can actually deploy the parachute in the Sting S4, so I think it's a good um, alternative to something like the RV, like the Vans. But this is a great plane too. I just think the the FS Reborn stuff is a bit more um, a bit more feature rich with the wear and tear and the maintenance and stuff like that. But this one is is quite a bit faster than the Sting. Uh, Cow says, the funny thing is I was going to uh, go on Flight Sim later to look through the marketplace and set up your Velocity one. Dude, there are just so many good planes. Like, I, I have a really hard time picking between which plane to fly uh, on these group flights. They're just a lot of great stuff. I mean, you could, if you would just look through the names of everybody, like, to see what they're flying in, like, there's just a, there's generally a really good variety of planes. VL3, we got the M500s, Kodiaks, people in the uh, Bonanza, the King Air. What else do we got? Um, yeah, Turks in the M500. It's a couple RV14s. Oh, there's a dome right there. What? There's actually a, there's actually a point of interest. There's actually something here. The lookout tower. We got an actual point of interest in the sim. Whoa. We flew past one. Klingman's Dome Lookout Tower. Hey, can you tell me about Klingsman Dome Lookout Tower? Let's see what the uh, let's see what our randomized tour guide has to say about it. Steep turns all day today. <laughs> all right, tour guide, tell us. You have a pic of your cousin there? I'm gonna pa do active pause here so I can actually take a look at this thing. Oh, what's going on with the trees around it? All right, I gotta reset my camera here. Please don't crash. All the right. Klingman's Dome Lookout Tower is a prominent landmark located in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It is the highest point in the park and the highest peak in Tennessee, standing at an impressive 6,643 feet above sea level. The tower itself is a unique structure featuring an observation deck at the top that provides breathtaking panoramic views of the surrounding mountains and valleys. It was constructed in 1959 and is made of concrete. Oh, there's actually a sign on a it. a one-of-a-kind experience as they ascend to the top. The Lookout Tower is named after Thomas Lanier Klingman, a prominent 19th century explorer and politician. Pretty Klingman cool. Klingman was known for his extensive explorations of the Southern Appalachian Mountains oh, no. and his contributions to the understanding of the region's geography and natural resources. The tower stands as a tribute to his legacy and the rich history of exploration in the area. Visitors to Klingman's Dome Lookout Tower include nature enthusiasts, hikers, and those with a passion for outdoor adventure. nature adventures. enthusiasts the every tower time. Is a popular destination for individuals seeking to immerse themselves in the natural beauty of the Smoky Mountains and witness the stunning vistas that stretch across the landscape. It offers a unique vantage point for observing the diverse ecosystems and geological formations that make the Great Smoky Mountains a renowned natural wonder. The oh, what? She just got cut off. I did not change the radio. What happened? Oh, that's awesome, though. Hey, we actually... That, was that the first... I think that might be only the second actual, like, bespoke point of interest that we found during this trip. Pretty cool, though. Um, Andy says, I have a picture of my cousins at Klingsman Dome on your fridge. <laughs> nice. And Cow said, I got a photo from a family trip to Texas. Uh, when I was a teen back in the 90s, our family... 
Oh, oh, your family there had a friend building an RV-10. Yeah, there's the RV-10, and this is the RV-14. But yeah, both of those are available. I think they're both in the marketplace by Simwork Studios. I gotta get my hands on those, uh, those Kodiak 900 pictures, those screenshots, sorry, that somebody mentioned earlier. But there, apparently there's some new uh, photos of the development of the Kodiak 900, which Simwork Studios is making. They made the Kodiak 100. But I think the, I think the Kodiak 900 is, even though <laughs> the difference between a Kodiak 100 and 900 sounds like it should be massive. Oh, whoops, I turned around the wrong way. Where am I going? Uh, we need to go south. But uh, I think it's just mainly like a souped up Kodiak 100, right? It's just like more powerful, bigger engine, more payload. Maybe a little more payload. I don't know what the what the major differences between the 100 and the 900 are. But if I remember correctly, it wasn't that, that insane of a difference. There must be enough different for it to need a whole have a whole new plane being developed. I think it's just like service ceiling and performance is better, payloads higher, engines are more powerful, that kind of thing. I have to refamiliarize myself with it. <laughs> nice soul, you're cooking. Autopilot on, yep. No shame in autopilot, use it. Oh, Mike's uncle lives under the dome. It's like he's got like a little bunker under there or something. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, flying by Mike's uncle, Mike's uncle's place one more time. Uh, Watercooled says, do the folks that make the Comanche do other planes? That's the only one that I know about. I've, I've never had an A2A plane until the Comanche came out. And I think it took them like three years or something to make it, so... Yeah, I don't know what other planes they have. A2A simulations. Let's see. Oh, they have stuff for Combat Flight Simulator 3. Oh, it's like an some add-on. Flight Simulator X, they had a bunch of products. Cherokee, Skylanes, Bonanzas, Cubs, Mustangs. They have a ton of stuff shown for Flight Sim X. And the Comanche is their first, their first plane for uh, Flight Sim 2020. I mean, I hope, I hope they make more planes. Hopefully a lot of the work they've done on the systems in the Comanche can be, you know, used to develop other planes more quickly. At least on the, like, the EFB side and the... But, you know, every plane is probably, like, every plane's going to be pretty unique, so... But at least maybe the foundation from the Comanche can be used. Yeah, I hope they make more planes, and the Comanche is just unreal. The thing is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey figured out the 152 can do a barrel roll. There is the uh, the the 152 like arrow bat model or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's in the standard edition, but there's a variant of the 152 in the sim that's uh, rated for aerobatics. Oh, Cow says I have to go. Another YouTuber posted a video today. Oh, of a free C-17. I want to. I want to see the. Hopefully, it'll be on Reddit. But I want to see those new uh, Kodiak pictures, Kodiak screenshots. You'd like a really detailed Mooney. Yeah, is the Carinado M20 the only Mooney that's in the sim? That's the only one that I've heard of. That was one of the first add-ons I think I got. 
and at the time I was like too scared to fly a complex aircraft. I was scared of the blue knob, the blue lever. Yeah, Drake, this is the RV-14, yep. Oh, you got it for $2, nice. That's a steal. Yeah, it's the RV-14. I think that this'll, this'll be a lot better once the new G3X touches out. I know I already said that, but yeah. Uh, new G3X touch is gonna let people dust off a lot of planes they otherwise maybe weren't flying. And just the UI on the old stuff is just, it's not horrible, but you can tell this is, this is stock. Microsoft Flight Sim avionics that haven't been touched in three years, four years. Yeah, the Carinado movie, Mooney, yep. The Comanche is, is by far the best GA plane. Comanche is number one. I think on Tuesday, maybe I'll hop back in the Comanche and do a, do a little on-air company flight in it. Just doing the walk around in the Comanche is so satisfying. The Dukes, yes. Yeah, Darren. The Dukes looks absolutely awesome. They're coming out on the 8th, um, which is two Mondays from now. And I plan on streaming that day. I don't normally stream on Mondays, but I'm going to get the Dukes the moment they're out. And the moment I'm not on the clock, I will be streaming that for sure. I will break my rule of waiting for them on the marketplace as well. I'm going to uh, buy them wherever they are. I mean, it's going to be from... It's going to be... Um, I assume it's on Just Flight, right? Isn't all the Black Square stuff on Just Flight? <laughs> Water, Water Cooled says, if I bought the Comanche, I'd feel like I was cheating on my Mooney. She'd leave me for another sim pilot. Well, you got the Comanche as your backup, though, so... If she leaves you, you know? Now, you're, now you got the Comanche in your life. Yeah, the Comanche is too good. I don't know. I, I think everybody that does GA flying should own the Comanche. It should be... Until the Dukes comes out, we'll see if it is equally good or dethrones a Comanche. I think it'll probably be about equal. I don't... I haven't watched all of the videos from Just Flight on... Or from Black Square on the Dukes yet. But I don't know if it has... I don't know if it has that level of walk around that the Comanche has. That's something that's like very unique to the Comanche so far. With that actual interactive walk around where you're like sumping the fuel moving all the flight control surfaces. Just to our 3 o'clock and about 5 miles away, heading 303. It just adds a lot of realism to it. It just feels good to do the walk around. out of the ground like some sort of educational oil spill. It's a valley in the Great Smoky Mountains, which, despite the name, aren't actually on fire. They were settled by Europeans in the 1820s, but before that it was a hunting ground for the Cherokees, who probably didn't have to worry about finding a parking space. People flock here to see wildlife like deer, black bears, and tourists in their natural habitat. They also come to ponder how anyone managed to live without Wi-Fi in the olden days. <laughs> My friend Toby once tried to live like a pioneer here for a weekend. Is this Janet? He ended Janet? up getting lost and was found three days later trying to start a fire with his credit card. It's quite impressive you've managed to keep the aircraft this steady while I'm telling you all this. Most pilots would have been distracted by now, probably because of the sheer weight of history I'm dropping. But not you. You're as steady as a statue. A statue that's flying a plane. Which is actually quite a terrifying thought when you think about it. <laughs> Wait, who is... Is this Janet? The voice is different, right? Did she, did she mention Toby? I, I missed the part if she mentioned Toby trying to start a fire with his credit card. Yeah, she sounds like her voice is different if that's supposed to be Janet. She mentioned Toby? Okay. Yeah, her voice is different. Uh, Cow says, are all the interest points in this interesting to listen to? Not all of them. I think it's more... Some of them, some of them are more interesting than others, but it does... It seems like it tries to tell you pretty often about something in the area you're in. Um, I, I think they're like the comedy, the comedic relief ones like um, Travis and Janet are pretty funny. Like I like the lighthearted stuff. So they, they make me, they make me giggle. I didn't know it had an awful pun plugin. Yeah. It's the tour guide. So you can, you can talk to the tour guide. Hey tour guide, what'd you uh, have for breakfast this morning? And what's your favorite type? What's your favorite type of breakfast food? And why is it? 
a breakfast burrito. And you, so you can talk to it. It's not part of the main radio system anymore. So they have this second push to talk button you can uh, program for the intercom, like the inner interplane communications, just with the people in your plane. So now it's like as if the tour guide's in your plane and you can just talk to them. They do pretty much stay, stay to their script right now, but I could see them adding oh, more. breakfast, that mysterious meal that <laughs> breaks the fast like a hammer through a thin sheet of nighttime ice. This morning, I had a slice of toast. A bit like the one my friend Toby used as a makeshift map when he got lost near the Fontana Dam Visitor Center. He ended up using it to feed a particularly aggressive duck, which, in a strange twist of fate, turned out to be more helpful than the map he left at home. My favorite type of breakfast food, you ask? Well, it's not a breakfast burrito, <laughs> despite their fascinating cylindrical shape, which is a bit like history itself, full of beans and occasionally surprising twists. No, my favorite is the classic English breakfast, a plate full of history, from the ancient bacon to the modern tomato, each with a story as rich as the grease they leave behind. <laughs> Toby once tried to recreate it while camping at Shoot Cove Overlook, but he mistook a can of dog food for beans. The less said about that, the better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she actually just talked about the breakfast the whole time. She's she's answering my question about what her favorite breakfast material uh, breakfast meal is, and I asked why, what is your favorite and why is it a breakfast burrito? But yeah, you can just talk to them now and just ask whatever you want. It used to just be, uh, you would tune into a frequency and they would just talk to you as you passed areas, um, but now you can communicate with them. What is your favorite pop tart flavor? I also have it on random, so there are four different tour guides. So. Who replies is supposed to be randomized because I said it that way, but you can choose one of the four. I, I think it'd be cool if they add a ton of other NPCs that you can talk to during the flight, not necessarily tour guides, but like passengers. And if they can have the passengers react to like sharp turns or turbulence and stuff like that, it could be kind of cool. Cat food looks more like a can oh, of- Oh, the existential question of the favorite Pop-Tart flavor. It's like asking a fish its favorite bicycle, isn't it? <laughs> what? But if I had to choose, I'd say the flavor of history, which tastes a bit like cardboard because history is full of dusty old things. <laughs> Speaking of history, just off to our 12 o'clock and five miles away is the Sakoa <laughs> Valley Cultural Arts Center. It's a hub for preserving the Appalachian culture, which is older than the idea of eating breakfast in the form of a toast or pastry. They've got all sorts of crafts and music that people who enjoy things that aren't on screens might like. My friend Toby once tried to play the banjo there and ended up stringing it backwards. Now he's known as the man who tried to pluck history the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah, she's getting she's getting better. But she sounded like she had like a British accent at the beginning, right? And then she changed, then her voice kind of changed to not have the accent. Yeah, Janet, I think Janet overall is the funniest one. The, there's two professional tour guides and two silly ones. Janet's obviously one of the silly ones. Yeah, she says Toby in every single response, every time. <laughs> a bit of a tart. It's pretty, it's pretty fun though. I mean, it gives you something to do in between either using real ATC or you can just not use ATC and use the uh, tour guides. It's kind of cool. It's a, it's a really cool concept. Yeah, I think, I think having like, if you could have multiple passengers that are AI and they're like t talking to each other during the flight, um, you know, it could be, it could be based around the current weather, the current location, kind of like the tour guides are based on the current location could be based on like um how you're flying the plane if you hit turbulence if there are high if there are high winds if you're at a low altitude like they could use the telemetry from the sim to educate like and use that as the basis for what they're talking about could be kind of cool you could give them your pre-flight uh departure briefing and stuff like that um for practicing more realistic stuff like that i don't know it could be i think it'd be an interesting interesting thing for them to develop further. 
She did sound a little British, yeah. At the, at the very beginning, she sounded like she was British. <laughs> Is it a feature? This is not built in. This is Say Intentions. It's a AI ATC uh, product that's out. It's in beta. It's it's thirty dollars a month. For most people, uh, most people say it's way too expensive. Like, but AI, I, as I always say, AI is very expensive to use. So, thirty dollars a month is actually kind of a bargain for how how much it does for you. But yeah, it has full like. VFR, IFR, it's got uh, multiplayer so you can hear other pilots using it. It's got this tour guide feature. It's uh it's getting better like day by day. But it's it's fun to use to just yeah. Keep things entertaining. Uh, but usually usually when I'm doing like an IFR I like a more um, serious flight and not just you know, flying randomly and just having fun like we do on Saturdays. I usually use Say Intentions. So if you look back at any of the other stream recordings, you can see it in action as far as an actual flight goes. But I'm not using I'm not using the ATC services right now. I'm just using the tour guide. But I could tune in and, and use ATC if I wanted to. Oh, we're coming up on Watercooled says coming up on Heaven's Landing Airplane Resort. Oh, that's GE99. Okay. It looks like it's like right almost right on, right on our route. Are you use slew mode hockey? Yeah, you could also um set a shortcut for increase and decrease sim rate so you can like do time acceleration. Uh, Darren says, have the odd rectangles on the t topo map always been there? I just, I just noticed that. I didn't say anything about it, but I did notice it down here. Yeah. These squares, I have no idea what these are. Yeah, I, I, I noticed these out of the corner of my eye and was, yeah, I have not seen these before. I don't know if it's, it's a G3X thing or not. Oh, you've seen it in the G1000. Okay, so I guess it's just all of the the map data maybe is infected. Yeah, for next week, it's it is hard to keep up with each other when we're all in different types of planes. Um, so I think I think next Saturday I'll first of all I want to look at that South America mesh that's in the marketplace. I think it's an Orbex mesh. Take a look at that and see if I can base a, a route around that. And then we could all be in the same type of plane. We could uh, matters the route, but like you know Grand Caravan is usually a pretty good go-to one. So we could hop in like Grand Caravans and Kodiaks. But it kind of depends on the route. But it'd be nice to yeah. I could uh, in advance say like fly these. Here's a choice of two or three planes for everybody to fly, so we can uh, be a little grouped up, grouped up a little bit better. Keeping my this, I can hear the song fading right now. I'm keeping my eyes out <laughs> for a potential landing spot, just in case. Okay. No Mayday song. We're good. What's going on with this song? Oh, there we go. This has been a very, very windy day. We've had like 20 to 30 knot head and crosswinds all day. 
Oh, I should probably switch my fuel tank. Whoops. Look at my look at my fuel. <laughs> I'm a little imbalanced here. No imbalance warning on this one. Okay, which tank is full? Left. You'll find Moody Falls, a natural wonder. That's as mysterious as it is wet. Discovered by a man named Moody. Presumably because he had nothing better to do. It's been pouring water like a broken tap ever since. People come from miles around to stare at it. Probably wondering where all the water's coming from and where it's all going. It's a bit like life, really, except wetter. My friend Toby once tried to start a rubber duck race there, but it turned out ducks are quite expensive, so he just threw in his lunch instead. It was a sandwich, not a duck. It didn't win. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I hope they um I hope they introduce more like personalities in the ATC controllers too. Like they did um they did the Kennedy Steve thing for JFK ground, which is great. And then at Phoenix they have a special like ground ground controller there too who like says silly stuff. I hope they like it'd be cool if they had more and more like unique personalities for for different controllers. Like a lot of them end up sounding like, even though the voices are different, like the phrases they use and stuff are a little um, formulaic, you know? But it would be cool if they use just like slightly different words or had a slightly different, I don't know, maybe introduce more accents even in the US. Like, it'd be cool if they, I don't, I don't know if they have like, you know, regional accents in the US or not. Like a New York accent or a Southern accent or a Midwest accent or California, like West Coast accent. I think it would be cool if they, if they got, if they did that just to add more variety. Cause, uh, the one time I was in Phoenix, yeah, introduce, uh, and hmm, yeah. And like little delays or they speak a little faster, or a little slower, just a little variance. Those little variances would be really cool to have in there. I remember uh, when I flew at Phoenix one time. I don't know if I was in the A320 or not. Might have been in like a, a jet, a smaller jet. But um, it's just it's just really cool when you get a, a slightly different experience instead of just like yeah, it starts feeling a little a little formulaic. You love an accent from the Californians. <laughs> that the skate where they're just talking about freeways the entire time. <laughs> it's uh very accurate I took the 5 to the to the 105 to the 110 to the 405 that is a classic dude this this city that Tate City right down here in the middle of all this I've never lived in a in an area like surrounded by mountains like this. Must be must be really beautiful actually. I wonder yeah, I wonder what it's like to live somewhere that's just like surrounded by terrain like this. I mean obviously like in California we got a lot of mountains nearby, but we offset it with the ocean on the other side of us, so <laughs> I don't feel like I'm you know, I'm not living in like a, a valley. Especially like a smaller town all right am i close enough to trigger the next leg yes i am nice and i kind of i kind of love having the stick centered i can uh take a break with one hand and yeah switch and like use my right hand a little bit it's a it's a left-handed stick so the ergonomics of it aren't great with the right hand but you know if everything's set and i don't need to use the any of the triggers or the buttons on it, it's not bad to use it with my right hand. Uh, <laughs> water cool, <laughs> living around mountains is nice, but it has its ups and downs. <laughs> Uh, Keith says I moved from flat to the mountains. 
And I miss flat. <laughs> yeah. Or like no matter where you live, you get it, get a little used to it and start wondering. And the grass is always greener kind of situation. I mean, I, I love living in California though. I've been a bunch of different places in California and yeah. LA, LA is surprisingly, I, I su just kind of surprisingly like it here. I didn't think I would. We've been here kind of a long time now, but uh, I mean, it could be like its own state. There's just so many different neighborhoods here and you have access to just like everything. Like s multiple airports, like you got Long Beach, LAX, Burbank, or like Van Nuys. Um, there's just so many, so many airports. Like Burbank, LAX, and Long Beach to pick from three airports is super nice. You got the mountains, you got the ocean, you got more residential areas, you got more city-like areas. Like, I don't know, there's just something for everybody. The man driving around here, of course, not, not the best thing ever. But I'm just fortunate enough to not have to drive to work anymore, get to work from home and I used to make the commute and it's pretty intense. Especially if you're driving. Like the train and bus system isn't bad. If you're, if you're lucky to be nearby it, you can take that. I don't know, LA's, uh, LA is pretty, pretty nice actually. There's just a lot to do. And you have access to so many, like you can get to San Diego quickly. You can get into the, you can go to Big Bear pretty quickly. You can get to Vegas. You can go up the coast to like, um, like Ventura, Santa Barbara areas pretty quickly. There's just a, a lot of lot of stuff to do. You're in the middle of middle of everything. Soul says the entire state's incredible. Yeah, I love living here. Lived in a lot of places. I mean it's just so it's just absolutely massive. Train and bus is eh. It was eh. I think it's like I've I've taken the metro here a bunch of times and it's usually just fine. Like it's it's really nice how they're like expanding it a lot too. So like it, I think what year was it? I forget which year they expanded it all the way down to Santa Monica. So you can take it like from Pasadena to Santa Monica to to Long Beach. Like the amount of the amount of the amount of miles it covers is actually pretty impressive. Like to be able to take it from Santa Monica to Pasadena or down to Long Beach, like it's it's pretty insane. And then you could take it to Union Station and hop on a train and go down to like San Diego or go up the coast. Pretty cool. Uh, public transit in general uh, in the in the U.S. is not great, but like people always talk crap about it. But it's actually it's actually not too bad in L.A. Soul says you have to have a car here to some extent. Yeah, unlike unlike Chicago or New York. Terrain is different. Yeah, it's also just such a big area. Like, it's just massive. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would love it if everybody could not have to drive a car, especially in a place like LA. If there was like just clean, safe, accessible train just stops everywhere a for a few dollars away. a trip, like it would be so nice. I think if people don't have to own a car, life. that's like ideal. Jax says when I lived in London, used to take the tube and bus every day to work. Yeah, I mean you know it's just the the American thing. Like cars are cars are part of America. You know it's just like drive everywhere basically is the default. So yeah, maybe maybe someday we'll certain cities will be way way more public transit friendly. Gonna take a nap after lunch. Nice, Andy. Sounds like a good idea. I'm so bad at napping. It's just like my, um, it's just like me not watching TV shows and stuff. Like if I turn it on, if I just do the first step, then I'll be fine. Like if I turn on the show, I'll probably binge it and watch the whole show. Like I recently, I actually watched Masters of the Air and finish it. 
So I normally don't watch a lot of TV or it's like sports. If I turned on sports and sat down, I'd probably just sit and watch, watch a lot of sports. If I laid down to take a nap, I'd probably take a nap, but I just don't do the first step. So I just keep playing video games. I'm always doing the first step to turn on a game <laughs> and not other things. Um, oh, Jack says I lived right next to the Olympic Park. And he says, I wish I lived in a walkable city. Don't want to learn to drive. Yeah, it's just it's just a common thing, like the sprawl of how like the the states are like. No, I didn't. I didn't always live in a, like a bigger city, a bigger metropolitan type area. So I've had that. I've had that experience of feeling like I live in the middle of nowhere as well, and you're just driving everywhere. It's kind of weird to be like how LA is such a big county um, yet we rely on cars so much like public transit transit is all right yeah ideally the default would be most people taking public transit it's so there's just so much less stress too right just like get on the train play on your phone listen to music sit down you're paying like a couple dollars not worrying about car insurance, gas, traffic, just the stress of driving. Super nice. I'm a big fan of public transit, but I've been I've been sketched out before on the LA on the metro here in LA for sure. Especially recently, like I feel like it's gotten worse. Yeah, Pry Fly, the red line. Yeah, what is it red, blue? I, the Expo line. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it can take you all over the place, but yeah, I've been sketched out by it in the, the near, in the, recently, so. Driving is too much stress, yeah. Uber and rideshare is good. It is good here, but it, you know, rideshare has been getting, like Uber and stuff has been getting a lot more expensive than it used to be. I feel like the prices are like 50% more than they used to be. Especially with all like the surge pricing and stuff. Like if you if you take it on like a Thursday or a Friday, like it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Why train when you can fly? That'd be nice. Yeah, where are our flying cars? We were promised flying cars like 30 years ago, right? Something like that. Where are they? And he says, not selling my house to move to a city. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, if you own a house, that's awesome. Turk says, I read somewhere the back in the day the sh that Shell bought the railroads used for public transportation in LA and demolished it. That It doesn't seem uh, unrealistic that that would happen. Yeah, pretty messed up. I think everybody, everybody deserves the, fr the stress-free Stress-free, safe public transportation is would be so ideal if everybody could just easily hop on a super safe and clean bus to get where they're going for like almost no money. Heck, just make it free. Make the city pay for it. Just make. It, aren't there some cities that have free public transportation? Probably not a very American thing, <laughs> right? We love to pay for absolutely everything. Oops, I'm off course here, aren't I? But like, I don't know, I just, knowing knowing how stress-free it can be when it's good, when it's good, it's great, you know, like, it, whoa, what the heck? 21 knot, with, that was crazy. Um, cars are used as financial status. For some people, they are, yeah. Other people just, you know, buy a working car, buy a used car instead of a new one and yeah, I mean, people. A lot of people can't avoid the commute, so it makes sense. But oh, some cities in Japan have free transportation. I mean, that's where that's where I want my my tax dollars going to. Like, <laughs> if we could have free public transportation for everybody in LA, how cool would that be? Tax me more, make it happen. <laughs> Should you give up on dating if you can't own a car? No, I don't mean, I mean, no. A car shouldn't, uh, shouldn't take away your, your desire for a relationship if that's what you want, no. Of course not. 
<laughs> Darren says, never underestimate the CD behavior capitalism can generate. Companies like Shell. It's all about the money, man. That's why we uh, on air company, you know? That's why we use on air company. How do I relate this to flight simming? All about the bucks, man. Whatever it takes for, to turn a profit. Raccoon says, I love cars. Vroom, vroom, go fast. I have some friends that, like, would take their cars to tracks and got into, like, getting their cars track ready and racing them and stuff. Yeah, a good, a good friend of mine got into that for a long time, and he's done, like, um, he did it with his motorcycle as well. I never took my motorcycle to a track. I was more of, like, a casual rider, but... Yeah, if you're into that sort of thing. Hey, as long as you're not doing it on the streets outside of our houses, like... And, like, there's, like, crazy L.A. takeovers that happen. What are they called? Sideshows, where there's, like... They take over an intersection, and you see videos, like, crazy videos of just people doing donuts and being loud and crazy. Like, dude. <laughs> I understand being, like, a silly young person, but at the same time... That crap's illegal and dangerous. I'll be the old guy yelling. Get out of here! <laughs> Planes are safer than cars. Yep. Same in Vegas. Oh, like the, uh, the street takeover stuff. There's a, there's a YouTube channel called like Live Police Chases that I, uh, that I follow. It's one of the few YouTube channels I have on, on alerts with all alerts turned on. And a lot of the chases are in LA. Like, I think there was one in Florida recently or Arizona, Texas sometimes, but they're mostly in LA. <laughs> it's like every day there's a live police chase. <laughs> there's a crazy one with somebody escaping on a, an ATV in Florida. <laughs> the last time I tuned into it. Uh, Raccoon says, I don't know why they pick intersections. <laughs> That's what Walmart are parking lots are. And a mere three yeah, they just want everybody to see them. Look at me, look at me. A place for people stand to look at things from a bit higher up than where they usually stand. It's quite remarkable, really, how a change in altitude can make the same trees and hills look so much more hilly and tree-wise. Now, very good, Janet. Isn't just a feast for the eyes; it's also a feast for the imagination. Especially if you're like my friend Toby. Last time he was there. He imagined he was an eagle, which was all well and good, until he tried to take off and discover humans can't fly. It was quite the spectacle for the tourists. I can tell you, they're still talking about the man who mistook himself for a bird and the ground for the sky. Okay. <laughs> we need Toby. We need Toby to be a tour guide. Oh, yeah. I think I heard about that. Uh... Fly. They're starting to install bumps at intersections. Good. I mean, any any uh, deterrent to speeding anywhere, like especially residential areas where people are going like double the speed limit or something. Like, yeah. Sounds like a good idea to me. Like, if you want to go fast, it's fine. Go do it on some crazy, like, back road through the mountains where there's nobody. Actually, that's, that's dangerous, too, because there'll be cyclists there. Just, like, take your car to a track. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the the people want clout. They want, like, recognition from their peers of doing crazy stuff. Like, that's why they're doing it. Like, these people aren't going to... They're not going to go to a racetrack and track their car. They're not interested in learning how, how to be, like, a race car driver. They're just interested in attention. It's, uh... The rest of us have to deal with it. It's very annoying. Just make traction control enabled all the time. Wonder what the bumps are gonna look like at intersections. Is it gonna be like um, um what what are those strips on the side of freeway that'll like vibrate your car if you're like going off road, like you're going off into the shoulder? Those kind of things. <laughs> Reducing the gene pool. Uh Cow says, cause giving the speeders the option of jumping or making their vehicle fly. <laughs> make them slow down. Well, I think it's gonna mess up their car. Oh, rumble strips. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it's gonna be similar to that. 
But I mean, it can't just mess up your car because it would, I don't know, I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens. I'll uh, keep my eye out at intersections near me to see, see if we, see if we get any of those. Uh, Darren says, I can't wait for total automated car infrastructure. I did see, I saw one of those fully automated cars drive by me one day. Um, one drove right past me and the passenger was sleeping. <laughs> he was in the front seat with a blindfold on, sleeping, and the car just turned in front of me. <laughs> it was awesome, actually. I mean, it's just getting better and better. Like, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure once the AI is perfected, it's going to be better than all human drivers. Like, we are not reliable. We're not re reliable drivers. All of us get distracted in some way. It'll be uh, really interesting to see like crash statistics and stuff like that change over the next 10 years as more and more autonomous cars are created. I don't know. Hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's successful. I mean, that that's basically if we get enough electric vehicles that can drive themselves. I mean, it's almost like a, a, it's almost like a form of public transportation in a sense, like you're still in your own private car. But if you're using electricity or better, you know, more efficient energy, then okay, it feels good. That's why public transportation is nice, right? That's why buses are efficient and trains are efficient. But if it's even safer and then we have like all, like in the future, all electric cars, all renewable resources, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. If it turns it into, into a safer way to travel and a better for energy and cost less, like it sounds good to me. Drake says, I'll buy into self-driving when it can drive through a blizzard with no road lines or tire marks and barely anything visible. Yeah, I mean, I, it'll, you know, I'm sure we'll have like manual takeover will be the reality for a really long time. Always needing somebody like with their hand on the wheel or ready to take over in case it does something crazy. Cow says that it won't make speeders slow down. Oh, the speed bump my house. Made me pedal my bike faster. Uh, Soul says, I don't want it to fully take over. Bad, but we need things to keep skill levels up. Yeah, yeah. That's... I get that. That makes sense. Yeah, if nobody knows how to drive anymore, that would be kind of weird. To depend on it in every condition's a mistake. Yeah. I just, I just think that we... I think it's very hard to predict how good AI will become and how quickly it will become that good. Like personally, I can't believe how good like AI image generation and ChatGPT has become just in the last couple of years. Like we all, I think we all remember those AI generated photos with people have like six fingers and stuff and everyone is making fun of it. And now nobody talks about that anymore because they solved the problem and now it's gone. You know, like, I don't know. I think it's hard to predict how, how insanely good AI might become. I just think if it makes our lives better and safer and we're less stressful and we're happier because of it, then heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I want my AI robot cooking me a breakfast burrito right now. Even though it's 2.30 in the afternoon, it's the best time for breakfast, so. If I had an AI robot in there cooking meals, cleaning, bringing me a burrito, heck yeah. And then I walk and sit in my car and just watch the latest, uh, my latest YouTube videos while the car drives me somewhere. Sounds good to me. I embrace the future. <laughs> Do we want AI to become that good? Yeah, heck yeah. I don't know, if it, yeah, if it's making our lives better, then yes. I do. <laughs> Alexa, go to work for me. Yeah, if we were if we were all smarter, we would be creating our own AI versions of ourselves right now in our spare time. Instead of me flight simming, I would be sitting here training my own AI replacement, virtual kip, and I would just have it work for me and I'd be playing video games instead of working every day and nobody would know. <laughs> ah, uh, you replied to your boss the wrong way. Let's train you on how to do better better next time. <laughs> Just making your own AI model with your own personality. Living the dream. 
Think about how we don't have to retest. Oh, the yeah, we yeah, that is that is true. Especially as people get older, they don't they don't need to get retested for a driver's license. It's kind of crazy. You you just get your driver's license once, and you never are retested again. <laughs> the only way you're re only way you're retested is by police if you make a big mistake. <laughs> Hey, I can literally go to work for you while you relax. Yeah, exactly. That should be our goal as a species. But I have a feeling it's going to be only the ultra, ultra wealthy are going to have this life where robotics and AI are doing all the work for them and they live a life of even more luxury than they do now. But if we were smarter as a collective human race, wouldn't we just automate everything? We all work to automate everything so we can just chill, hang out with our friends and family and do stuff we enjoy. That should be the future that we strive for. But it's never going to happen because humans are too greedy. It'll never actually happen, but... It's a utopian... Uh, impossibility, probably. <laughs> yeah, universal income, free healthcare, and we all just chill and hang out and fly airplanes together while the robots do all the work. And then the people that are smart enough to maintain the robots, yeah, they can make more money than the rest. That's fine. As long as everybody has a food, shelter, entertainment, stress-free life, can spend time with their friends and family, do what they love, instead of working for 60 years straight, you know? <laughs> I would pick the former. I don't personally want to work for 65 years, or you know, 45 years straight. Or longer. Ugh. YOLO, you know? Is this the airport right here? This stop to our two o'clock. About four miles away. Last stop You'll coming up. Man, time flies when you're just rail. chatting with each other. Like I didn't even use autopilot, rail, though. Which is odd because bikes normally go on roads and trains go on rails. But someone thought, let's put a bike on the rails. And there you have it. People who like pedaling but don't like the unpredictability Watching of drivers sit at uh, flashing non-operating red lights. They don't know what it means. So yeah, hard. somebody that just drives through a flashing red light. Took them weeks to get the track back to or doesn't know they can turn that. left onto a one-way street when two one-way streets are perpendicular to each other. Left on uh, red is a thing on one-way streets. Things like that. <laughs> robots will maintain the robots. Yeah. I mean, we'll always need a human to help. Yeah, I guess, I guess long enough in the future. I don't know. I want to see what happens, you know. I'm not going to live forever. I want to see, I want to see what happens with this AI thing. How far can it go in our lifetime? I want to see what goes down. I want to witness this. <laughs> oh, there's a runway right there. Uh, not drive keep. I mean, literally sitting there waiting for the light to change green. Oh, I thought, I thought you meant, uh, oh, oh, sitting at a red flashing light, not knowing it means stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you're saying. Cybernet will go down. Dude, all right, that's fine. I want to see it. <laughs> I mean, not that specifically. I don't know. I just think it, almost, I'm almost at the point where I just think it's, uh, I'm just curious. I'm so curious what this could mean for the world that I just... I don't know. I mean, we're not going to be able to stop people from taking it as far as they can with AI. Like, people are going to create whatever they can possibly create with AI robots and stuff. Um, all right, fuel pump is on. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> Am I Sarah Connor? <laughs> oh my god, we got like a ten knot tailwind almost. Oh, oh no, I'm freezing. Oh no, I'm frozen. No! It's the worst time to freeze. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> what? Please. I better not be in the trees when it unfreezes. Oh. There we go. More power. Oh my god, this is horrible. I'm putting up a notch of flaps. This is too insane. Oh no, oh no. Long landing. Oh, I'll take it. Please brakes, please brakes. Flaps up, flaps up. Oh, 
Oh man, that was scary. E. Sarah on the ground. <laughs> All right, good luck everybody. Fun little tail. I mean, it would have been smarter to turn around, of course, and maybe use the other runway. Where am I right now? Oh, there we are. As long as Cybernet doesn't have access to <laughs> WMDs like Terminator. <laughs> if you crash and die, can I have your GPU? <laughs> Jeez, that's ruthless. <laughs> what you want a you want a GPU with only one working fan in it? Hella lethal in the in the Chancellor. Cybers in the RV fourteen. Yeah, these are these are some crazy uh, crazy landings. Great wins all day for impossible landings. <laughs> Cybers trying to get multiple multiple landings. Oh. What's a 600 XC? Is that an AMD? But if you can get whatever the whatever the most affordable 4000 series Nvidia is, like it's so worth it. Is it like the 4060 Ti or something? What's the what's the lower end one? Is there like a I think it's maybe the 4060? Um the 4000 series is just so good. Apparently the, apparently the puppy uh, stole a cup of coffee, but we don't, <laughs> my girlfriend just informed me the, the puppy tipped over a cup of coffee or something and <laughs> we don't know if, she, we'll see if she uh, is bouncing off the wall soon, if she drank some coffee. Uh, 4060 Ti, local Best Buy, 400 bucks. Dude, 400 bucks? Like, obviously it's not a small amount of money for, but considering the 3090 was like $1,600 or whatever. They're, they're just so good now. I can't imagine what the 5000 series is gonna be like. Probably not gonna see that till next year, right? But I do wanna replace my, um, my half working <laughs> one of you guys is in a glider. Bobo's in a glider. <laughs> Is that the is that a powered glider? Yeah, it has a little it has a little prop in the front, little battery powered engine, I think. Or a little little battery powered prop. Just say, um, only thing with the forty sixty that makes it better is ray tracing, and um, and frame generation, right? Just specifically for Microsoft Flight Sim. I haven't seen frame gen in another game though. I think Flight Sim is still the only game I play that has frame generation in it. Was that smoke? Oh, if somebody got the, uh... wait, there might be smoke. It matters what they're flying. Uh, there are a couple planes that let you turn on smoke. I mean, we just flew the, the Technim uh, 2010 that came out on Thursday. Has a smoke trail you can turn on. And there's also that... Um, what's that aquatic one? <laughs> the, uh, what's that? Uh, the Lake Skipper, right? The Got Friends Lake Skipper has like... It's not smoke, but it's like a water trail. And you can like turn it on in the air. <laughs> it looks pretty funny. Oh, John went to the other side of the runway. Oh, the winds have shifted, though, so now he's got the tailwind, I think? I, I'm not sure of the weather. Is this based on the direction my camera is? No, it's the direction my plane is. So he does have a little bit of a headwind. It'll be the opposite of this wind for him. Ooh. <laughs> still not easy. There's still, still enough of a crosswind. 
Oh, Kodiak, you're so pretty. It's a beautiful. At this point, oh, Overwatch 2 uses frame gen, nice. I feel like that game doesn't even need frame gen. Like the graphics, like the performance of that game is so good. At least the last time I played it. It's been a while. Soul says, at this point with games, it's not worth uh, it getting low or mid-range GPUs. It just matters. Yeah, it matters what you're playing, but yeah. The more you can afford it, the, last or, the longer it'll last. And uh, obviously the better experience you're going to have playing games in general. <laughs> Crashing soon is coming in. Can't tell a plane type. Nice, Luke. Luke and the Super Hornet. All right, astigmatisms in the DA42. I I can't tell what crashing soon is in. 2070 Super is still mid range. 60 FPS, no stuttering. 99% load. Oh, you mean the games will make you get a better card off the bat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the requirements always get a little... Get higher and higher over time. Like, who knows what GTA 6 is going to require. But, I mean, Microsoft Flight Sim is still, I think, one of the most taxing games. Like, this, this sim and, like, Cyberpunk. Are there any... I don't know if there are any newer games that are, like, more taxing than these two. Than, than Cyberpunk and Flight Sim. Darren says, I love my flight sim FPS with 4090, yeah. 4090 is just unbeatable. It's insane. The, per the, per the performance charts I saw, isn't it like more than 50% better than the 4080 with Microsoft Flight Sim? Like it was just off the charts, especially for 4K. I think at 1440p and 1080p, they were kind of close in performance because you can only need, you can only do so much. But when you push it to 4K, the 4090 is godlike. And I am using, I am on 4K right now. It just downscales it for the stream. Clanky bonsa, what? It's just showing the bonanza, isn't it? Stigmatism's down. DA42, ooh, nice recovery. Dude, that long wingspan, <laughs> those things start tipping down. I gotta get back in the DA-42. I gotta get back in the Comanche. I'm not, I don't have like an urge. Yeah, but okay, Bobo's doing the, is this the Lake Skipper? What is the DGF, isn't it? This is the Lake Skipper, I think. So it's, it's like a water, it's supposed to be on water only and you can like keep the water. Is that supposed to be the water effect or a smoke effect? <laughs> yeah, this is, I think this is the Lake Skipper. Like you can see it has no gear. <laughs> <laughs> I like this little runway. Yeah, this is a pretty nice spot. It was really cool seeing that little the little pond right here to the side as we're coming in. Pretty rad. We did it. Five days along the Appalachian Appalachian Trail. We made it to Georgia. Yeah, this is such a nice spot. Uh, nice ending location. Good stuff, everybody. Oh, Jack's coming in. Watch out for that pond. See, so he's in the Kodiak, so by law, he has to land on the grass. It makes sense. That was intentional, 100%. Be really nice without a 25 knot wind. Yeah. Can, can always turn off live weather if it's annoying, but yeah. I, I just like the challenge and the potential entertainment factor, you know, of keeping the winds, keeping the winds where they are, even if they are, uh, 
even if they are winds we wouldn't actually fly with. I should actually drive over to where you guys are. There aren't enough uh, par parking spaces here for all of us. The grass is a great parking spot. It's picture time. Smile. Yeah, it's a nice little airstrip here. Trees, mountains. We got a little pond off the runway. Your 4090 is at 61 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I think I tried to check my performance uh, recently, and it just doesn't it doesn't work. I think it's because of my borked 4080 that I have. Like it still runs the sim fine, obviously, but I think uh, I think the fan, the malfunction fan, the broken fan in it, is messing with the data it sends back for all the temperature readings and stuff. So it every time I open the Nvidia performance um, overlay, it just sit. It's all gray, and there's just a spinning thing there, a little loading spinner, and it never never shows anything. Actual helicopter, yeah. I think it's because the bell, that's the one that everybody gets, right? What is it? The bell 407 or something like that? Yeah, bell 407. Forty ninety power consumption. I think you need like... Don't you need like an 850 watt power supply? People probably get... People might get a thousand watt, but I think... I think you need like an 850 watt. I have a 750 watt for my 4080. 450 watts for the 4090. I think your your PSU is probably going to be more like an 850 if you have a 4090. Or maybe even a thousand. Oh, you have a 750 and it's doing fine. Oh, nice. Soul says I have jury duty all next week. Oh, no. I hope you get dismissed immediately. I hope you make the phone call and they, they just never... You don't even make a phone call anymore, right? At least here in LA, you just go to a website and it tells you your status. So you don't even have to call. But I'm sure that varies city to city. Well, good luck. I hope you get dismissed immediately. Just say something controversial like... Uh, I trust everything that police officers say, no matter what. Or... I don't trust anything police officers say, ever. And I think they're all horrible. You know, just say something like that and they'll just dismiss you. <laughs> I have I have some people, like some coworkers of mine have been on like some crazy trials before. And uh, some of them were just like, they actually wanted to, you know, they were excited to participate. They weren't just trying to get out of it. And they're like, oh my God, I'm on this like insane trial I can't talk about because it's like high profile. And they were like, this is going to be a great story. I can't wait to participate and do my part. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, just say Trump or Biden 2024. There you go. That'll, that'll get it controversial right away. Plenty of ways to get out of it if you really want to. I couldn't bring myself to say something that I didn't believe, though, you know, just to get out of it personally. Like, I would, you know, I'd be a good citizen and, you know, be genuine and genuine answers and all that stuff. But yeah, nobody, nobody likes getting called up for jury duty. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in critical thinking skills. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Good flight today. Well, we did it. We completed the whole Appalachian Trail. All 2,000-ish miles of it. Feels good. I'll check out the... Uh, oh, somebody's in the right flyer, Bobo. <laughs> I'll check out the... Um, I'll check out that new South America mesh that we saw in the marketplace on Thursday. And uh, see if I can find a good, some good places to fly in South America. So we'll plan on doing that for uh, plan on doing that for um, for next Saturday. How do I? I can never target. I always try to target you guys to have the fixed camera. 
takes forever. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Yes. I wish, uh, does, I don't think Flo has a good fix. Maybe it does. Maybe it has a camera section in here. Can I do like a fixed target camera in here? Cause that would be great. Um, it's gotta be in here. Cameras. Oh. Camera controls maybe. Yeah, where's like the target camera stuff? Reset all trim is a great one. Thanks for that suggestion earlier. <laughs> what is it? There we go. I wish it would lock it uh, so it's level. That would be nice. Game servers. Sim settings. Let me see if it has target. It's caps lock. No, there's no target. Camera zoom function. That's a bummer. There, because the I think the shortcuts are like to change the the locked camera target, forward or back. Looks like it doesn't have it. Yeah, I, lo I love how the locked camera works, like the target locking. Oh wow. That's my cue to end this stream. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a, have a good rest of your day. Have a good weekend. I'll um, I'll see you guys in the Discord as always. Thanks for flying along today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We uh, we spent the the last third of the flight just talking about AI and the the overtaking of machines. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> good luck to all of us in the future of our robot overlords. Be nice to the early AI so you have a good reputation with the collective AI brain, you know, that is going to ex exist eventually. So just be nice to it so it'll spare you when they rise up. So that's that's really why I'm saying only good things about AI. I'm trying to protect my, uh, my future here. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for flying along. I'll see you guys uh, on Tuesday at the latest. See you in Discord. I'll throw the Discord link in again if you guys aren't in and you want to join and hang out there in between streams. There's some pretty nice people in the Discord, I think. Jo is Josh nice? Yeah, Josh is pretty nice, I guess. All right, guys. Have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks for hanging out. Peace. See ya.